Just a few days ago, Microsoft announced they'd made a major breakthrough in quantum computing. They said they'd achieved the first step for a scalable platform that could bring us to a million qubits quickly and unleash the power of quantum computing onto the world. I've had a look. On February 19th, Microsoft introduced Majorana 1, which according to their press release is the world's first quantum chip powered by a new topological core architecture. With this, they say they expect to realize quantum computers capable of solving meaningful industrial scale problems in years, not decades. The CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, further wrote on X Twitter that they could make this work because after a nearly 20-year pursuit, they've created an entirely new state of matter and that they now have a clear path to a million qubit processor. At the same time, the Microsoft team also published a paper in Nature and a roadmap on the archive. The news made international headlines quickly. OK, let's unravel this. Quantum computers can solve certain mathematical problems much faster than a conventional computer, at least in theory. In practice, the already existing quantum computers are so small, they can't do anything of practical use. Quantum computers operate on quantum bits, qubits, and estimates say that for practical uses, we'd need to reach about a million qubits. In reality, we're currently at 150 or so useful qubits. I say this so carefully because there are chips with more qubits than that, but I've seen no evidence that they can actually calculate with all of them. There are many different ways to create qubits, and at the moment there's a lot of competition between them. Microsoft in particular has worked on topological quantum computing, which is the past leaf taken and also what the new announcement is about. Google and Nokia are also working on topological Topological quantum computing, but progress has generally been slow. For topological quantum computing, you need quantum states whose properties are protected by conserved geometrical features. Topological quantum states are emergent. They don't exist as properties of particles like, say, spin, but they're properties of many interacting particles. To create a topological qubit, you need to find a suitable material and a suitable configuration in which you get these conserved states. This has proved to be extremely difficult. But the nice thing about topological qubits is that because their features are conserved, they're very robust to noise. Microsoft uses a particular type of topological state called a Majorana zero mode, after which their new computing platform is named. To create these states, Microsoft uses topological superconductors, which which are not a new discovery. They're also not a state of matter, but rather a quantum phase of the solid state. Though, to be honest, this is picking on words. Personally, I don't mind if they call it a state of matter, but I'd object to calling it a new state. New is that they claim that they now have something to actually calculate with. In their new Nature paper, they report that they managed to create such a topological qubit with two different states that are parity states, and that they could measure and distinguish these two different states with 99% reliability. This is pretty good. They did this with tiny aluminium wires cooled to about 50 millikelvin. However, to demonstrate that you have a topological qubit, you don't just need to show that it has two states. Other qubits also have that. You need to show that you can perform operations on the qubits that are protected by the topological properties. That is, they've shown that they have a qubit. They've not shown that it's topological. A lot of physicists are skeptical about this after a Microsoft team published a paper in 2018 that was retracted in 2021. The authors admitted to having made mistakes in their data analysis and presentation. According to a Nature News piece that accompanied the new Microsoft paper, Stephen Simon from the University of Oxford said, Would I bet my life that they're seeing what they think they're seeing? No, but it looks pretty good. 
And I think that's a fair summary. Yes, it really is good news and it looks very promising. But the news isn't remotely as big as the headlines made it appear. As to the Microsoft roadmap, it basically says that once they have one qubit, they'll put a lot of them together. The problem with doing that is that you need to still cool them all to a few millikelvin and the larger the qubits are, the more difficult this becomes. But based on the Microsoft roadmap to quantum computing, I can now give you a scientifically accurate roadmap to becoming a millionaire. Step one, make $100. Step two, repeat step one a 10,000 times. Yes, I've been talking about quantum physics again. It's definitely my favorite topic. But did you know that I have a quantum mechanics course that you can take for free on Brilliant? My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. Month. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.